Hello, my friend, and welcome to Sukuninska, hosted by me, Johnny Seifert. This is a celebrity mental health podcast where I say it's okay to not be okay. And if you have the same match, whether you're watching or listening, click that subscribe button, leave a five star rating and a review, and let's keep spreading the word it's okay to not be okay. Now, let me tell you about my guest today. My guest today spent the duration of season six of Too Hot to Handle, finding the validation in her self love. She may have not coupled up with anyone and broken any walls, but the one wall she did break was being hard on herself and finding her courage. So to tell me her story, I'm delighted to welcome to you, Sukhaninska. It's the angel herself. It's Lucy Saeed. Hello, Lucy. Hello. I love you call me an angel. That's well, nice. Well, it's what Thank you me. call your fans. You say to your fans on TikTok, hey, <laughs> angels. I'm like, well, you must be Queen Angel then if they're the little angels. I like that. Yeah, I do. I always call people angel. I'm like, hey, angel, how are you? You okay, angels? Like, guys, girls, anyone. Just everyone's a little angel. I like Should it. I tell you why you do that? Because I learned this about two years ago and it stuck with me. Because I call everyone mate or darling. And the reason is, right, don't tell anyone this, is so you don't ever have to know anyone's names. It's because you can always call them angel and then you don't ever have to worry about all the hundreds of people that you meet. Okay, that's partly true. There are some people I work with and it's really, really bad. And you know, and it's been too long and I love them to bits, but I, I don't know some of their names. And I, it's way too late to ask. And I don't have their Instagrams. So I'm like, I can't even do that. And you can't ask. It's too late. I've got this right now going on and I am sure I'm calling someone by the wrong name and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I can't ask someone else because then that's embarrassing. But that's why you call them mate or for you, angel, because then you never have to worry about their names. No, never. And it just sounds nice. The problem is that angel's a nice one. It's when it's like love and then you're like, are you patronising me or what? (laughs) Whereas angel's quite nice. It's like fluffy. Angel's fluffy. I don't think I, to be fair, I don't think I could, I'm not cool enough to say love. I think, I think it's an age thing. It's like a box yeah, thing. Maybe. You I know. Like, You're right, love. Well, look, let's talk about being an angel and going back to the beginning of angel life of you, Lucy. Let's go back to the beginning. 1996, you were born in London. Talk to me about your journey growing up. What was your home life like? Gosh, um, I've, I was really lucky, I have to say. Like, I had an amazing childhood. I've got the most wonderful parents, family, like, super supportive. I always actually, I used to say, when I was at drama school, I used to say, I'm not, I don't think I'm the most talented person. I was like, I know I'm not the most talented person in my year at this university, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, I feel like the most loved. And I was like, that is like way more important to me because it doesn't matter if you're the most talented person in the room, if you're not loved or you like have an amazing support network around you, and then you've got nothing really. In my opinion, like in my opinion, amazing family, kind of interesting because my dad is Indian Italian so like half my family on my dad's side is like Italian and Indian so a lot of different like cultures going on there amazing food yeah I had a really like really good childhood I kind of I was a bit of like a little like chubby weirdo to be honest but I always had this like innate confidence that my mum had inbuilt in me so I think I was quite lucky like I didn't get bullied or anything like that I don't really know how because I was odd but I had like, yeah, I had loads of friends and loved cake. What do you think made you odd? I'm quite like, I think I can be quite an intense person. I guess odd is in the fact of like, even like crushes on like boys in the years above. Like I remember having a crush on one of my friend's brothers and I went around her house and I left a note on his pillow. He was like four years old, older. Her mum did encourage me to do it. But yeah, she was like, you're so weird. Like, why are you doing that? Little quirks. And I just kind of would always just do my own thing. Like I remember my my friend dared me to get my face painted as a cupcake. She was like, if you do it and walk around the whole town and see everyone for two hours, it was her friend's like birthday party. She was like, I'll give you a goodie bag. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. Paint my face as a giant cupcake and I'll go. But you sound like an extroverted introvert that when the camera is on you, when it's your moment to shine, you blow, you shine. But when you're away from the camera, and I'm not talking about a physical camera, but when the moment's not on you, that's when you kind of coil back and you have those emotions of feeling intense because there's this love that you've got to give out, but you're kind of waiting for someone to give you the validation of, yeah, now go and do it. So you wouldn't go and paint your face yourself, but if someone said to you, go and do it, you're like, yes, this is my moment. That's so true. Yeah, no, I am. Yeah, I am. I am like... I am an intro. Yeah, I am. Was an introverted extrovert. extrovert. So you're not introverted. You're extroverted, but the introverts first. But you can become extroverted when you're ready. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, I, and I like kind of like some time to myself and like self reflection. I always, I'm all, I'm constantly reflecting on myself all the time. Like every day. Like I'll, I am a bit of an overthinker as well. So I will overthink a scenario, and I am a bit of a, I don't know what, like definitely like at the minute. I'm trying not to be, but I, I am, I don't want to say the word Delulu, 
but I, I, I do live sometimes in the like in the hope in the fantasy of things in life in my head and it just escalates and escalates and escalates so I'm 31 you're 28 right there's only three years between yeah. us I think I'm in the same mindset as you and I think it comes from the place that when you look around at everyone you know at home and mm -hmm. everyone's moving on so they've got partners they're married they're having babies they're in their lane and you live in this delulu land because you're like the media that we're in and you know you left university in 2018 with a ba in acting i left uni in 2014 with a ba in media and so our worlds are so different to theirs and they can't relate to our world and they don't understand the fact of you go right what are you doing next wednesday oh i've got an event oh no i've actually got a premiere and then i've got this and then i've got a dinner then i've got a lunch da, da, da. and they go well i've got kids to feed and i've got this and oh my god you've got two minutes to yourself and you're like you can't relate to their world. They can't relate to your world. And so yeah. whilst you think the grass is green and you're like, I wish I had all that, you actually prefer your life. And the Delulu part of your brain is going, actually, I can be whoever I want to be. I don't have to be defined by my partner or my children or this family setup that everyone else has got. That's so true. Like, I literally just got back from France. I was, had a week in France. And part of my brain, like, a month ago was like, oh, yeah, like, I want kids now and I want to settle down now and I want... I'm seeing everyone getting, like my friend just got engaged. And I was like, oh, oh, like I want that. Why am I not engaged now? And why am I not getting married? And why am I not having babies? And oh, I want to be, you know, like dropping my kids off at school with their packed lunches. But then also, yeah, I just had a week in France with no commitments, no like freedom, do what I want, like with one of my best girlfriends, go where we want, when we want. And I was like, yeah, but if I had that, I couldn't do this right now. And like you just said, like, oh, if you go to an event next week or, like I was previously dating someone kind of when this all came out, like very briefly, like not seriously, but, and even that for like, it only kind of really lasted like a week because going to events and things, I was like, it, it, it's such a different world. Like they're a nine to five and then got like commitments. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to lunch and I've got this dinner. Oh, oh, I've got an event tomorrow. Oh no, actually, oh, I'm flying off there tomorrow. I just, I was like, actually, it feels really selfish, but it's like, it kind of is what I like need needed to do at that time or at the minute. Well, it's interesting because it's like going, right, it's four o'clock, I need to get my makeup done because at five o'clock I need to leave because I need to be at the event at six o'clock. And they're like, I'm at work, what do you mean? And then you're also going, well, look, if I take you to this event, this is going to be a bit weird because there's going to be lots of celebrities around. I mm -hmm. want you to not be scared of them, but I don't want you to overdo it. So there's a very thin line. I'm there, I'm Lucy, I'm the celebrity you're my partner, you need to big me up, but you can't overtake me, but you can't undertake me. And unless you know that world, it's so hard to comprehend. Yeah, it's so hard. And actually everyone that like I've kind of dated or seen this year has actually been quite, I don't mean to, but I think I go for introverted people. I think they're like, I think that's what I actually, weirdly, I don't know why. I love the thought of an extroverted person. I love the like big character, but there's something that always really intrigues me about someone who is introverted and just who's more reserved. I, I think I'm like so intrigued. Like what, what is behind that? Like, what are you holding back from me? I, I need to pull it out of you. I'm like desperate to know what that is. So I don't think that they would enjoy those situations anyway. So I'm thinking, well, you probably wouldn't enjoy it. You wouldn't like it. So I can't really bring you into that world anyway. A weird, weird balance, I guess. Like it's been, it was even strange. London is so strange compared to other countries. Because I've not been to America, so I don't know what it's like for everyone in America right now. But when I was in France, like, people would recognise me every day, like, ask for a selfie every day. Whereas coming back to London, I did have one girl last night, but apart from that, like, it's, like, not really a thing. So it's just such a, like, different... But obviously my friend didn't care. But I thought, yeah, if I was here with, like, I don't know, like, a boyfriend or a partner, and they're someone who's quite private, they might really hate that. Oh, absolutely. And you have to give the people the time, whether it's guys or girls... And it's very much going, look, this is the job. And then you're still going to go home and sleep with me. You know, that's the yeah. thing you've got to cut off. And it's very difficult to understand that on both sides to go, look, I've got to give these men the attention because that's what my career is. And that's what they're looking for. And when it comes to my Instagram, you know, my whole world is being a bikini model and it's furthering the brand and it's furthering my Instagram followers. And that's what the audience want. But also going, that's not the real me. That's the job. Then there's the me. And I think what you yeah. did really interesting on Too Hot to Handle was that you, not I'm not saying you are aware of the cameras, but you've worked so hard in the industry. You've done a couple of films. You've got your degree. You've done a bit of TV that you knew exactly how to play the game. You didn't go 
OTT one way, didn't go OTT the other way. So for example, like Georgia Harrison on Love Island, same type of thing. You know, yes, you were in your bikini the whole time, but you didn't break so many rules that could put people off in the future hiring you because you're just seen as a too hot to handle girl or you're just a reality star. You could still be an actress. You could still be a presenter without that label attached. I thought you did that really cleverly. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, like, to be honest, that also is me, I guess, as a person anyway. Like, I am, like, don't get me wrong. Yes, I'm a sexual being and that's great. But I also prefer to get to know someone first anyway. So, like, the whole situation on the, the show, yeah, I was like, I'm not going to force anything or rush into anything. And obviously, yeah, there are cameras. I'm definitely not going to rush into anything when there's, like, 50 cameras that she's staring at me and that's going to be out there for the rest of my life and like my parents could watch it and like I said I'm an overthinker so obviously my brain was like I hate the thought of ever regretting something that's like my biggest fear is doing something that I regret so it it definitely yeah like there definitely was any like shower things you're definitely aware that there's multiple cameras pointing at you which is just not normal in real life but yeah I think I just wanted to try and be as much me as possible because I know, like you said, my Instagram, my mum always says to me, it's, she was like, it's so interesting watching your Instagram because it's, it's so, she's like, that's not the Lucy that I know. She's like, don't be wrong. Like, you know, I love your pictures. No, I love all this. And she'll always be my my biggest hype woman. But she was like, that's not you. And then when people meet me, I think they're always kind of surprised or intrigued. Like I met, I I was at a group dinner last week and someone said, oh yeah, like, oh, I'm, really surprised I really can't work you out now like I thought I'd kind of got the measure of you and actually you're really different to what I thought I think for me just in life personally like I just live by the ethos just be kind try and be a good person and on the show I think I just really try to keep my calm in a lot of situations and just take a breath like there were a few situations that really did push me and mentally like it really pushed me. I didn't think it would. I didn't think it'd be as intense as it was. And when, like, when you watch those kind of shows, I can understand why people say, oh my gosh, like, why is she crying? You know, she's known this person for four days or, you know, it's been a week or like, it's not that big a deal. But when you're in those situations and you're so invested and it's like such a pressure cooker that, oh yeah, like I, at one point I was, I don't want to say heartbroken, but yeah, I was like, I was so upset. And it's it's all heightened in there because then you're still surrounded by these people. There's you can't get away from it. You can't leave the situation like you would in real life. I literally remember like crying myself to sleep one night. It was horrendous. But now I can laugh at it because I look back and I think, okay, well, you know, I got through it and it made me a stronger person. Well, there's different layers, isn't there? You know, the when you do a TV show, whatever you're filming, because it is so intense and because the hours are so long you do forget about the world outside. You forget who your friends and family are because that's all you know. You only know the cast and the crew in that moment. There's also the element as well, being on a TV show like that, where you're going, well, if I'm still single on episode four, are the producers about to get rid of me because they want to change the story? Because you've got a job to play on the show. You are a character. You're a great character on the show, but everyone has a role to play. And so when you're enjoying an experience like that and you're like, this could be developing, you don't know who's going to come in. Are they going to take it away from you? And then you're not in control. And then the moment when you're doing those episodes, you are in control because you can control who you are and you've not got someone pushing you in certain directions. And so it is really hard and it is heartbreaking because you're going on a grief journey, for example, Charlie, not just this is ended with Charlie, but there's also grieving of we're now not going to go on a date. I'm not going to experience a date on TV and I'm not going to experience being in a couple in a bed now, waking up with my partner. And I'm not going to experience being part of a four or a six or an eight, whatever. So there is a grieving process you go on. But I suppose the question is, why do you want to put yourself in that shoe? So, you know, very successful already with your degree, very successful doing two short films already, very successful as a presenter. Did Too Hot to Handle come to you or did you go to them? They came to me, yeah. And when they come to you, right, I want you to come on the show, Lisa, you're interested. What was going through your mind? Because you would have known, you knew what the show was this time around, but you would have known that I'm going to have to put myself in some uncomfortable situations where, as we've discussed already, you've done so much work on your self-love, so much work on your self-worth. And yet it almost is like snakes and adders that, yes, I can go a little bit forward, but equally I can go a little bit back. And as a paranoid person like I am, it's kind of going, I'm going to overthink every situation. And is it worth it? for you know the followers the business the tv fan do you know what i mean yeah yeah no i completely get what you mean and i did like i i had a moment 
So yeah, I got asked. At first, it was they didn't tell me that it was too hot, and then after a while, they were like, "All oh, right, actually, it's too hot to handle." And I kind of had did have an inkling anyway that it might be that. I'd also loved the show. I'd watched every single series before anyway, and I really enjoyed it. And I, I like I liked the concept and thought it was really fun. And I actually really liked the workshops. I thought they were really good. Like I I was desperate to meet Brendan. I was like, I really want to meet Brendan. Um, he's so cool. Uh, so that was great. I was like, Yay, Dick! <laughs> but I know what you mean. Like I definitely did have the thought of, oh, like this. This could be, well, one, it's like you could be con like conveyed in a really bad way. I was like, I could literally be edited to look awful. That was really my main, that was like my main concern actually was, oh, what about if I got edited really, really badly? And then I come across really badly and people think I'm rude and I'm horrible or I'm like, whatever. That that was kind of my biggest fear. Um, and yeah, obviously like I had a little bit of, oh my gosh, what are people going to think? Because with reality TV, there is always a bit of a stigma around people like that do it. And I thought, oh, you know, is this going to possibly, yeah, like hinder future career things. But then I also knew there's people that are presenting or like people that have previously gone on Too Hot or on shows like that, that, are, that have progressed and like used those shows to like their advantage. And they're now doing what they want to do. And they're just, like literally living their dream. Like, so I thought, do you know what? I haven't really got anything to lose. I did freak out when I got to Turks and Caicos because your phone is taken away. So you have no contact with your friends, no contact with your family. And that was scary because then I had a week of being like, oh my God, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Like, is, is this my path? Am I meant to be doing this? And people might find this absolutely bizarre. I don't care. It's my thing. I have a thing for dragonflies, always have done. And the day that I really questioned it, I woke up, I walked up my room and there were two dragonflies on the pool. And I was like, yep, I am where I'm meant to be. So, and then yeah, from then on, now if I see a dragonfly, I just know that I'm doing the right thing. So you record the show, you come back to England. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's a couple of months whilst they get the edit to ready. And you know, they beautifully shoot to what to handle. You know, the scenery, the music, everything is perfection. And so it takes a bit of time for the show to come out. In that time, before it's gone out on TV, but after filming, how did you adapt to coming back to England and having that self-worth, the courage, that relationship with yourself that you've been working so hard on in the experiment? It was hard it, because it's, I kind of, I felt like I'd had that twice as well because basically last year I did a season in Mykonos. So it's like you have your life set and then you come back to nothing and you have to rebuild. And it's kind of the same with Too Hot. It was like, I've had these four weeks or five weeks that has all been structured and I know exactly what I'm doing and where I'm going. And then you come back and it was kind of nothing again and nothingness. So it was quite scary. Like I had to kind of rebuild, but I just had to reassess what do I want? And actually last year was amazing. I traveled loads. I still traveled loads this year, but I've made my friends and family in London a massive priority. I just had an evaluation of what makes me genuinely happy. What, yeah, like what gives me that self-worth and that validation and what do I need? And actually I thought I need to see my friends more. I need to see my family more. I need more, yeah, I need a little bit more stability. So I just kind of focused on that really and just done the things that genuinely make me happy. And also like I've dated, I've learned more lessons, tried to be the lover girl, didn't work, but just wasn't for the right person. And I think it's just trial and error and I'm still learning and it's funny because my friends and like people around me always tell me like, don't be too much, don't be too much. It's always the feedback I get from friends and family. It's like, but don't, don't give like, don't. and I, maybe it's wrong of me, I don't know. But I always say, but if, if me giving like that much to someone isn't what they want, then they are not my person. So like for example, okay, I went on a date with someone, we were like dating like a, a few months ago. And after the second date, I got them a thank you card and I baked them like homemade cookies and I dropped them at their workplace. And it ended up, it, it ended like a kind of a, a week later, basically, it didn't go anywhere. But, and my friend's like, oh, you know, that's too much. And you maybe you shouldn't do that. Da, da, da. But I was like, but that is me. Like, I love doing those things. And you have to, like, I'm not, I, I don't want to change myself for someone, you know, so if someone doesn't want that. And I think that kind of validation that actually came from those, like the show, from the workshops, especially like the cold, when we did the, like the ice bath. I hate being cold. And honestly, I just remember I stared at Sabrina and she had this power. I was in awe. And I just thought, do you know what? Like, she's doing this. I can do this as well. And I had Gianna next to me. 
And I don't know what happened in that moment. Cause I, but everyone was laughing because they were like, Lucy, you're smiling. You're literally smiling. I was like, yeah, I'm, I am like, I am so powerful right now. I'm in my brain. I was thinking of my dog, my family, my friends. I was like, I'm so fine. I'm warm. I'm okay. The workshop actually did generally help. And the whole process, honestly, I, I'm so glad I did it. I had never realized how much I needed to learn about myself. Well, you were in the present and you were in the moment and you weren't distracted by your phone. You weren't distracted by mm -hmm. society. You were just going, there's nothing can go wrong. If it, the ice bath, yeah, it can make me cold for a second, but what's the worst that's going to happen? Okay, cold being cold, but you know, nothing can attack me, you know? And it's mm -hmm. funny what you say about the dating. I mean, you are literally like Brie Vanderkamp. I love it. But I did the same thing. I went on, I was going to meet a girl and basically she was staying at a hotel because she'd come to London and she told me three weeks before what her favorite sweets were. And I kept it on my phone and I knew it was the <sighs> mushroom sweet. And I knew that when I saw her for the first time, I was going to give it to her. And anyway, we had this date arranged for a morning date because she had a really busy day. And she was in London for a party. And I went to her hotel to meet her for this walk and she was still asleep. And I was awake, obviously. And I got to the date and she wasn't there. And I waited. Anyway, I gave the sweets to the concierge. He then delivered it to her room. She then got it, you know, three hours later. And you're right. People go, Oh, that's a bit too keen. I'm like, but that's me. It's authentic to me. And if someone accepts it, and that's why we have love languages, because we're all very different. We have two out of the four, but no one is the same. And so if you can be authentic to you, that's the best thing. Because at least you know you've done the right thing. And you know that the portrayal of Lucy that you want to give to the world is the one that's being received. Whether you like it or not, that's me. Take it or leave it. And if you don't want it, fine. Yeah. But there are people that do. So when we think yeah. about that, though, have you had the therapy to work on that self-love? Or has this been a journey that you've just done on your own? I have had a bit of therapy this year. I haven't been, like, massively consistent with it. I have had a few sessions. And it has helped. Just, I think, to have that hour of literally talking about yourself. No judgment. Because even friends, as much as I love them so much, obviously they have, they have like, a a view on it because they care about me and that and they want you know they're biased they're biased to me and they're biased to my feelings most of the time so yeah I have and I'm I'm so pro like therapy counseling my auntie is a counsellor at my university like massively like an advocate for it I think it's great even to be honest if you're like not struggling with something it's always fun to learn about yourself like I learned like from my therapy this year that it's a really random thing but I never used to cry in front of people which I know is crazy because I just cried on TV in front of millions or thousands. But I never cried in front of anyone, I, my family, my friends, until I was about 16. I would bite my lips so hard. I refused. I never wanted anyone to see me sad. That was like my biggest fear was people seeing me sad. I was like, no, I'm this happy person. I'm this bubbly person. I bring like light and life to everyone. Like I want everyone to feel good around me. And actually that's amazing, but it's also quite a big burden sometimes it was the weirdest experience I went to see a show with my mum and there was like a pretend gunshot in the show and in the audience and they shot it at me and it scared me so much that like I was like frightened I like went Ugh. I wasn't expecting it but also it just like it erupted these floodgates and I did not stop crying the whole hour journey home after this show and ever since that moment I think I like because I was then crying in front of my mum I, I got over that phobia and well now my friends will tell you I've cried in front of anyone I've, like multiple breakups cried on the tube cried on a train cried on planes such cry wherever now but yeah it was a and I spoke to my like therapist about it and we were like kind of working out where that had come from and it was just really an interesting because I'd, I hadn't connected it and she was like, oh that's really interesting like you know I wonder why and then we were just kind of divulging into that and it was this whole yeah like pressure on myself to be the person that makes everyone happy and makes everyone smile and it doesn't cause any problems do you have any siblings i've got one older brother who's very different to me we're very close but we're not we don't like talk every day but he's very reserved so he's quite unemotional very pragmatic like i've never seen him cry is that because you want your mum and dad not to be worrying about you because they know that they're worrying about him and so you take that responsibility and that burden of going, right, well, I'm not going to cry because I know my brother's upset and I don't want my parents to feel like they've got two children that are upset. I definitely, I hate the thought of my my dad ever knowing I'm upset massively. Mm. I, I Even now, I, 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 like, I still work on that now. He's amazing and really supportive. And he'll ask me, like, you know, are you happy? Are you okay? Like, you can tell me, you can talk to me. 
And it's just this weird, because I know that they're so amazing and they work so hard to, to try and keep me safe, happy, healthy, that I'm like, oh, I don't want to show you if I'm not happy or 100%. I'm not. Yeah. So it's, it's a weird one because it, it's, it's not a bad thing in the sense of they, they are doing everything to provide that but then in that in turn I don't want them ever to know like oh well I'm not happy or I'm not okay or I am struggling I would tell my mum now like we're really close now like she would know and I would tell her but I think it is weird I think because my dad is so protective of me and I know that he loves me so much that it I know it'd make him sad if he knew I was sad so I think oh I don't want you to ever know that I'm sad because it will make you sad but I know that he would be there for me even if I did that if I told him I was yeah but it's hard I did therapy this year and I didn't tell my family. I told him my friend. And stupidly, mm. I told TikTok. And then my sister saw the TikTok going, you've had therapy? I went, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, she knows. And it's like this big secret. And I'm like, I just don't want to let them down. And therefore, when you do a show like Do You Want To Add On, I'm not talking about the sex scenes and the shower scenes, but mm. you know, when your parents watch the workshops, what was that conversation afterwards that you had with them about, you know, that is the real me and yes you haven't seen that at home but these are certain feelings that I do have did it make you close with your dad or have you not had that conversation at all dad don't watch not it. my yeah my dad's not watched any of it um and how does that make you feel that he's not watched it I don't really want him to watch it like mm. he he's very supportive but he met he sent me a lovely text message saying like to be honest, I am actually going to get him to watch a few bits of it just because I think it'd be quite funny to see his reaction. But you're going to choose um, what bit? You're not going to know. Yeah, I'll choose, what, I'll choose what bit. But I, it's not really, I'm, it's not a kind of show he would watch anyway. Like, it's really not. My mum's watched the first four. She hasn't, and I think she watched the last one, but she hasn't watched the middle, like, the three. The because, Yeah, she was like, I'm, her friends have watched it and, like, they, and they've cried. So she was like, I'm really scared to watch it. She was like, I know you're fine now. And she's like, I know it was an amazing journey for you. I saw, you know, when you landed, I saw you and you were glowing and you were happy and you, you know, you're still on a journey now. But she was like, what? and even for me, like it actually, it was really hard to watch. I'll be honest. Like even now to watch it is, it's just, I guess watching, one, watching yourself just be so upset and then reliving that emotion internally because I, I go it takes me straight back because I remember that feeling like that literal gut dropping and just feeling sick and then having the thought of oh my gosh I've now got to sleep in a bedroom with this guy and and be okay with it and well not even be okay with it but yeah be okay with it because at, the, at that point you know he'd told me in a really kind of polite way in a nice way and been respectful well and yeah so you know like I'm not someone to fly off the handles I try and be quite a rational person as much as I would have loved to have just been crazy but I thought no I mean, like I'm not that person I, I I am I'll be rational and nice but then it yeah it's horrible to think oh I'm gonna have to watch you now and I'm gonna watch you probably get with another girl and maybe another guy will you know will come in for me but at that point I didn't really have like a connection with anyone else but yeah watching it really was like it made me nearly teary like watching myself there's one clip where um because I like to I, I like to be normally quite composed and I, I remember there was one morning yeah I literally cried to sleep and Kylisha would hold my hand I was like you're okay you're fine you're fine you're fine don't worry it's okay and I'd like taken myself off in the morning just have a few breaths before everyone woke up and watch the sunrise I was like okay just kind of ground yourself again like you are okay like this will pass it's just going to be uncomfortable and then I had to go and do like a little chat with like to to like camera about about it all. And watching that chat, like me at home watching me on the camera, I just looked at myself. I just thought, oh, like my face was so puffy from crying. I was obviously so upset. I'd obviously not really slept. And I, yeah, I just thought, oh, like that poor girl. But then I've had so much love from so many girls and like guys, like people on the street, like really sweet. So. Hopefully, maybe I helped someone. I don't know. Well, you definitely have. And I hope you're on this journey of that courage start. I hope you're on the journey of self-love because you're an amazing cast mate on Too Hot to Handle over the past six years. And one of those standout stars that really shows that it's not just a show 
that you need to be in it to get into a relationship or to have sex on TV. You can also just be on there for your own journey and to find yourself love and self love. And I hope you continue that journey, Lisa. I really do hope that you continue the therapy, the manifestations, the meditations, the dragonfly sightings, and just really do you because you're going to be the best person by doing that and you're a work in progress and you know as we get into our 30s you know that progress continues with the use of social media and whatnot so a massive thank you to you for appearing on Security and Scare and if you loved your panel like I do the episodes in the library of Sophie Stone House Megan Thompson and Seb Melrose from previous series as well and if you enjoyed today's episode click that subscribe button leave a five star rating and a review and let's keep spreading the word it's okay to not be okay on TikTok at Johnny Seafoot 92 on Instagram at Johnny Seafoot at Security and Scare podcast where you can find me Lucy where can people find you at Lucy I'm score said and obviously they're your angels who are going to be finding you as well obviously. my angels oh yeah. there we go i'm johnny c but thanks so much for watching or listening to you until next time thank you and goodbye